Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Okay, here we are. This meeting is being recorded. I see you. Yeah, hey there. All right. I don't know why I'm on a limited view here. Should be whoever talks gets the big view. There we go. Okay. Still getting used to this, even though I've been doing it for quite a long time. So let's see. Everybody put something in the chat box so that I can uh, make sure everybody's uh, seeing this properly. So everybody uh, put something in the chat box, please. There we go. There we go. We got some in the chat box. Very good. <clears throat> Decided I better do it early this week because of the, the weekend. Okay. Dr. Boatwright's first one. That's good. Okay, well, welcome y'all. You are going to learn about uh, something you probably never heard of before, but yet it's uh, one of the most important types of uh, tissue in the whole body. So, let's go ahead and jump into it here. Hmm. Okay, Bo, if you would mute your microphone, please. I can't for some reason. There we go. Okay, areolar tissue. The vastly important tissue you never heard about. First glance, most people look at this and say, well, isn't that specifically referring to tissue surrounding the nipple? Is this about the importance of sex? Is this about the important, uh, importance of orgasm to health? Well, the answer to all of those is no. Our bodies consist essentially, let me put a red dot on here, of a thick-walled cylinder lined internally and covered externally with a continuous layer of cells or epithelium called endoderm and ectoderm. Tissue which they enclose is mesoderm, and the two epithelia are continuous at the mouth and anus. The endoderm forming the lining of the alimentary and respiratory passages, and the ectoderm, the skin. Both epithelia send prolongations into the mesoderm, which are thereby divorced from the protective or absorptive functions of the surface layer and undertake different activities, including the formation of glands with which discharge their secretions to the surface of the epithelium from which they are derived along the epithelial stalk or duct which connects them. For example, the liver, pancreas, sweat, mammary, mammary glands, and hair follicles. Some downgrowths become separated from the surface and discharge their secretions into the bloodstream. 
endocrine glands, or take on other functions such as the nervous system, which is derived from ectoderm. The mesoderm forms all the cells which originate either in ectoderm or endoderm, thus including all epithelia lining the spaces which develop in mesoderm, the blood and lymphatic vessels, the serous cavities which surround the heart, lungs, elementary canal, and central nervous system, burst the tendon sheaths, and joint cavities. It also forms muscle, blood, and connective tissue cells, the gonads and the li lining epithelia uh, of the urogenital tract. Connective tissue cells are the source of the intercellular substance of the body, including connective tissue fibers, the inelastic white collagen fibers and their slender counterparts, the reticular fibers, as well as yellow elastic fibers. Intercellular substance fills the entire extracellular space, permeates every organ, and is continuous with surfaces of all cells which are exposed to it. It's responsible for holding the various organs in place, allowing the requisite amount of movement between them. In some situations where free movement is essential, the extracellular uh, material is in the form of a fluid, as in the blood and lymph vessels in the cavities of joints, tendon sheaths, and bursa, and in the spaces of surrounding uh, the heart, lungs, abdominal, uh, viscera, and central nervous system. Even these fluids are variable in consistency, ranging from thin water, watery lymph, to the thick glutinous material in some joints. joints. Elsewhere, the fluid contains a fine meshwork of connective tissue fibers or areolar tissue, which is sufficiently delicate to allow a considerable amount of movement between adjacent tissues. So here we're seeing that the areolar tissue is a meshwork and elastic and allows a lot of movement between adjacent tissues. This is found between the bundles of fibers in a muscle and around the muscles and its tendon. It also surrounds many other tissues such as nerves and ligaments which have to slide on adjacent structures during movements and organs which have to be capable of considerable distension such as the gullet and urinary bladder. The, re the loose areolar tissue form most of the planes of cleavage in the body and allows a rapid spread of infection through it too. So there's kind of a backdrop to that also. Extracellular materials are continuous with the surfaces of the cells which they surround but do not penetrate. Thus, the collagen fibers of the tendon are attached to the outer membrane of muscle cells or sarcolemma, and the collagen fibers of the dermis are attached to the deepest cells of the epithelium or the epidermis which covers them, binding the outer protective tissue to the underlying structures. Reticular tissue is a special kind of areolar tissue formed of very fine collagen fibers and loose networks supporting the proper tissue of various organs. Especially seen in lymphoid tissue, lymph nodes, the tonsils, spleen, liver, and bone marrow. Connective tissue cells associated with reticular fibers are frequently phagocytic, such as macrophages, capable of ingesting particles, taking up dyes injected into the living animal. These cells and others of similar properties in the blood and elsewhere are collectively known as the reticuloendothelial system. Classification of connective tissue. Irregular connective tissue, extra peritoneal. Between the peritoneum and the inner surface of the general layer of the fascia with lines the interior of the abdomen and pelvic cavities, there is a considerable amount of irregular connective tissue. This extra uh, peritoneal tissue varies in quantity in different situations, it's especially abundant on the posterior wall of the abdomen and particularly around the kidneys where it contains a lot of fat. It's scanty on the anterolateral wall except in the pubic region and above the iliac crest and a considerable amount in the pelvis. Extra peritoneal tissue is in continuity with the epimysium of the muscles of the abdominal wall and through this with the internal connective tissue of these structures. A considerable amount of real or connective tissue intervenes between the parietal peritoneum and the abdominal walls with the fascial lining of which it blends known as the extraperitoneal tissue varying in quantity and contains a varying amount of fat in different regions. 
While this tissue loosely connects the parietal peritoneum to the abdominal wall and pelvic walls in general, so allows the peritoneum to be relatively easily stripped from them, it's denser on the inferior surface of the diaphragm behind the linea alba, so the parietal peritoneum is more firmly adherent to these parts. It's especially loosely arranged in some places to allow alteration in the size of certain organs. For example, the front part of the pelvis and the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall where it allows the urinary bladder to distend in an upward direction behind the anterior abdominal wall from which it strips off the peritoneum as it ascends. It's usually heavily laden with fat on the posterior abdominal wall in relation to the kidneys. The visceral peritoneum, on the other hand, is firmly united to the viscera, which it covers and cannot readily be stripped off of them. In fact, the connective tissue layer of the visceral peritoneum is directly continuous with the fibrous tissue stroma of the viscera. Thus, from the point of view of the pathological conditions, uh, the organ and the visceral peritoneum must be considered to be a part of the viscous itself. Now, when visceral manipulation called bloodless surgery procedure is performed, it frees up the scar tissue placed in this layer in reaction in reaction to trauma or cuts, thus freeing up the capillaries, lymph vessels, and nerves controlling the adjoining structures. This helps restore the normal function to these structures and normalizing pain. And the 25th illustrated edition of Dorland's Medical Dictionary, this is called the Law of Average Localization. Visceral pain is most accurately localized in the least mobile viscera and least accurately in the most mobile. So basically, uh, somebody came up with a law for this. So you can have scar tissue form in this area and you have to free it up through manipulation basically. Skin, a real or tissue doesn't refer specifically to the real, a real of the nipples. A real or tissue is loose connective tissue underlying the skin through which is transmitted capillaries, lymph vessels, and nerves. So when the skin rolling procedure is performed, it frees up the scar tissue placed in this layer in reaction to trauma or cuts, thus freeing up the capillaries, lymph vessels, and nerves controlling the adjoining adjoining structures such as bone and muscles. Now this is why when uh, doctors take uh, my part two and we show you the skin rolling, a lot of them just go home and out of all those procedures uh, that I teach, all they do is skin rolling because it works so magnificently and that is because it frees up all, all of these things, uh, the capillaries, lymph vessels, and nerves both to the skin and the underlying organs and it works just just great. If you haven't done that on a number of people, you should start doing it. The dermis consists of felted connective tissue with a varying number of elastic fibers and numerous blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. Deeper connective tissue of the dermis is reticular. Non-striated muscular fibers occur in the superficial layers of the dermis wherever hairs are present and subcutaneous areolar ar tissue of the scrotum, penis, labia, majora, and nipples is present. Below the reticular layers, the subcutaneous areolar tissue, except in a few situations, uh, uh, it all contains fat. In many regions, the skin is separated from the deep fascia or other structures by loose areolar tissue, and in these sites, the skin is freely mover movable over the deeper structures. The areolar connective tissue which permeates the tendon between its fascicles providing a route for vessels and nerves is condensed on its surface into a sheath or a patendineum, uh, usually containing elastic as well as irregularly arranged collagen fibers. Such a sheath doesn't provide a true free surface being continuous with the surrounding areolar tissue, the loose uh, arrangement of which imposes minimal drag on the tendon and its movements. The longitudinal network in the tendon is augmented by small vessels from the surrounding, surrounding areolar tissue or synovial sheath where the latter is present. Synovial sheaths and bursa occur in situations where structures which move relative to each other are in tight apposition. This applies particularly to sites 
where tendons are deflected around bones or under retinacula in uh, the vicinity of joints, but the arrangement is seen its simplest in a few locations, such as the olecranon and the patella, where the skin must move freely over subcutaneous bony surfaces, usually under conditions of pressure. Now, first, let's ask a question and answer in the chat box here. And we're about halfway done. Uh, how many of you actually knew what a real or tissue was before now? And that would be a yes or no. Did you know what a real or tissue was before now? We have a no for Dr. Burke, a no from Dr. Donaldson. Come on, this is interactive. Everybody interact here. Diane, no. Okay, well, we're learning something. That's, that's good. That's what these are for. Bursa formed at such sites are simply flattened sacs of synovial membrane supported by dense irregular con connective tissue. They're interposed in the loose or tissue or superficial fascia, superficial fascia between skin and bone because of their position are usually known as subcutaneous bursa. These walls are to some extent tethered to periosteum and dermis, moving with these structures and hence sliding over each other. The whole arrangement is often described as the device to reduce friction, but its most fundamental characteristic is the creation of absolute discontinuity between tissues, yielding complete freedom of movement over a limited range. Okay, how many of you knew that without a real or tissue, we could not move. How many of you knew that? Specifically that name of tissue. How many of you knew that without a real or tissue, we could not move at all? Dr. Burke says no. Come on, let's have some interaction here. Dr. Boatwright, not me. Diane, no. Donaldson, no. Okay, that's good. Each bursa contains an apillary film of synovial fluid acting as a lubricant, provides the cells of the synovial membrane as a lubricant, providing the cells of the synovial membrane with a wet environment on their free surfaces and a metabolic intermediary between tendons and their surroundings. Tendon synovial sheaths occur where tendons pass under ligamentous bands, retinacula, through fascial slings, or osteofibrous tunnels. They consist of two concentric layers separated by a capillary film of synovial fluid and continuous at their extremities. The arrangement is thus a closed double-walled cylinder, the internal or visceral layer of which is attached to the tendon by loose or real or tissue, the external of a parietal layer to neighboring connective tissue structures or periosteum, where the skin is subjected to repetitive lateral displacement associated with pressures in the forearm or elbow and writing, or the buttock and certain sedentary occupations such as hand weaving, adventitious bursa may appear, providing the skin which must with much more freedom of movement, throwing some light on the factors involved in the evolution of bursa in general. Now in, uh, I think part one and two, uh, some of you may, know and remember uh, we stayed out of uh, Robin's pathology there's a lot of doubt that bursa even exist in the normal human being that they're only there in pathological circumstances uh, and this backs that up it only appears when there's sufficient irritation there for it to appear it's just not there normally during development of large amounts of mesoderm uh, persists as less specialized connective tissues permeating all regions of the body, not, not only as the microscopic real or tissue component between, for example, the fibers of muscle, nerves, and tendons, but also in larger macroscopic accumulations between whole muscles, viscera, and other larger structures. Between muscles which move extensively upon each other, it is usually in the form of very loose or real or tissue, presumably to facilitate movement. 
The peripheral nerves, blood, and lymph vessels travel in the loose fascia between other structures often bound together as neurovascular bundles. So basically, as you can see, uh, if scar tissue infiltrates it from some type of damage uh, which results in inflammation, some type of trauma or cut or whatever, remember as scar tissue ages, uh, constricts, it dehydrates and shrinks and puts pressure on the areas. So it's putting pressure on these neurovascular bundles. And again, doing the bloodless surgery on the internal organs or doing the skin rolling frees those up and allows uh, the proper flow of lymph and blood and the nerves to work properly. Fat may accumulate in the cells of the fibroareolar tissue in the superficial region between the muscles and skin. The dermis is compacted uh, irregular connective tissue and deep to this and continuous with it, loose areolar tissue, often adipose and of a variable thickness is known as the superficial fascia. It allows the skin considerable freedom of movement and acts as, as a uh, thermal insulator. Branches from the subcutaneous nerves, vessels, and lymphatics travel in the superficial fascia. Superficial fascia is most distinct over the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall where it contains much elastic tissue, may present the appearance of several layers as it passes through the inguinal region into the thigh. It's also well differentiated in the limbs and perineum. It's thinnest over the dorsal aspects of the hands and feet, side of the neck, face, and anus, and especially over the penis scrotum, particularly dense in the scalp, the palms, and the soles where it's permeated by numerous strong bands of connective tissue, binding the superficial fascia in the skin underlying, underlying fibrous uh, structures, deep fascia known regionally as the aponeuroses, of the scalp, palm, and soul. The, the galea aponeurotica covers the upper part of the cranium and forms the epicranius as a continuous fibromuscular sheet extending from the occiput to the eyebrows. It's united to the skin by the firm fibrous superficial fascia is connected to the pericranium by loose areolar tissue which allows it free movement, the latter carrying it with the skin of the scalp. The subaponeurotic areolar tissue is loose and lax in the tissue which is torn when the scalp is avulsed. The superficial lamina of deep cervical fascia is continuous behind with the ligamentum nuchae and the periosteum covering the spine of the seventh cervical vertebra. It forms a thin investment for trapezius from the anterior border of this muscle is continued forwards as a rather loose areolar layer covering the posterior triangle of the neck to the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid where it becomes denser. The suprasternal space contains small quantity of areolar tissue and the carotid sheath is thicker around the arteries than the vein. Peripherally it's connected to the neighboring layers by loose areolar tissue. The prevertebral lamina of the cervical fascia is anteriorly separated from the pharynx and is covering a bucopharyngeal fascia by a loose cellular interval termed the retropharyngeal space. Further from the medium plane, the same loose areolar tissue connects the prevertebral lamina to the carotid sheath and the fascia on the deep surface of the sternocleidomastoid. All the ventral rami of the circle nerves lie at first behind the prevertebral lamina and the nerve to the rhomboids, the nerve to the serratus anterior, and the phrenic nerve retain this uh, position throughout their course in the neck, but the accessory nerve lies superficial to the prevertebral fascia. Areolar tissue is so called because it, its meshes are easily distended, thus separated into areola or spaces which open freely into each other and are consequently easily blown up with air or permeated by fluid when injected into any part of the tissue. Such spaces do not exist in the natural condition of the body, but the whole tissue forms one unbroken membrane composed of a number of interlacing fibers variously superimposed. The term the cellular membrane is in many parts of the body more appropriate than its more modern equivalent. The chief use of the areolar tissue is to bind parts together while the lacity of its fibers 
permeability of its rela, it allows them to move on each other and affords a ready exit for an inflammatory and other uh, fused fluids. It's one of the most extensively distributed of all the tissues, and yet we'd never heard of it. You know, the, the way that I found out about it is like reading um, Gray's Anatomy cover to cover. I kept seeing it pop up over and over throughout the whole manual. And that's what made me want to investigate it more. I'm going, wow. I uh, can't believe something is uh, this uh, pervasive and they never taught us about it in school. It's found beneath the skin in a continuous layer all over the body connecting it to the subadjacent parts. So it's under all the skin. In the same way, it's situated beneath the mucous and serous membrane. So it's under all the mucosa and serous membranes. It's all both also between muscles, vessels and nerves, forming and vesting sheaths for them, connecting them with the surrounding structures. Additionally, it's found in the interior of organs binding together the various lobules and lobes and lobes and lobules of the compound glands, various coats of the hollow viscera, the fibers of the muscles, thus forming one of the most important connective, connecting media of the various structures or organs of which the body is made up. Wow, can you believe that? This is so important. This, this is directly commenting out of guidance physiology And yet, can you believe they never taught us that in school? Wow. In many parts, the areola or inner spaces of areolar tissue are occupied, occupied by fat cells constituting adipose tissue. Areolar tissue, when stretched out, is seen to consist of delicate, soft, elastic threads interlacing with each other in every direction, forming a network of extreme delicacy. It's composed of white fibers, yellow elastic fibers, intercrossing in all directions and united together by a homogeneous cement or ground substance. The matrix showing cell spaces wherein lie connective tissue corpuscles containing protoplasm out of which the whole is developed and regenerated. The white fibers are arranged in wavy bands or bundles of minute transparent homogeneous filaments or fibrilla which have a tendency to split up longitudinally or send slips to join neighboring bundles and receive others in return. The individual fibers are unbranched and never join other fibers. Yellow elastic fibers have a well-defined outline and are considerably larger in size than the white fibrillae, forming bold and wide curves, branching freely in anastomose with each other. The connective tissue uh, corpuscles of areolar tissue are flattened lam lamellar or white fibrous tissue tendon cells. Granular cells formed of a soft protoplasm containing granules. Plasma cells of wall dye containing a largely vacuole, vacuolated protoplasm. Vacuoles filled with fluid in the protoplasm between the spaces. In addition to these three typical forms of connective tissue corpuscles, areolar tissue may be seen to possess wandering cells or leukocytes emigrated from neighboring vessels. And this is basically to take care of infection that floats through it. Blood vessels of connective tissue may permeate areolar tissue carrying blood to other structures. Lymphatic vessels are very numerous. Most forms of connective tissue, especially in areolar tissue, beneath the skin and mucous serous surfaces. Nerves have been demonstrated to terminate in areolar tissue and the tissue has very little sens uh, sensibility. Adipose tissue consists of small vesicles, fat cells lodged in meshes of areolar tissue. These fat cells are contained in clusters in the areola of fine connective tissue held together mainly by a network of cap capillary blood vessels which are distributed to them. Okay, any comments or questions on a real or tissue tonight? Any comments or questions on a real or tissue tonight? Okay.
Now here is uh, a document on evidence-based medicine and we all hear about it but uh, we're supposed to know it but they don't really tell us what it is. Well, uh, you know, a funny thing when I first applied to uh, PACE uh, for hours, one of the things that I comment on in all my seminars is it uh, fulfills the evidence evidence-based medicine and best practices of the ACA. Well, this guy said, I was on the board of the ACA and I don't even know what it was. Um, and so I just copied it off their website and sent it to them. <laughs> I said, well, it's on the website. Here it is. So, you know, thanks for reminding me about skin rolling again. You're welcome, Timothy. You're welcome. Uh, it's, it's super important. If you haven't used skin rolling, or the uh, visceral manipulation, you know, in certain cases, uh, you really should, you really should. I use skin rolling to some form on almost every patient at different times. Okay, evidence-based medicine and best practices. A lot of this is taken out of the British Medical Journal right here, okay? Basically, you have scientific investigations through studies and well, you've observed in your practice. It's a combination of both of those, okay? Is the name connective tissue a broader category than areolar? Yes, that is correct, uh, Dr. Boatwright. Areolar is a specific type of connective tissue. Thank you for that question. Okay, now there are four different uh, TTAPS films, and I've done a fifth class uh, specifically on acupuncture. At some point I'll be making a film on that too. But uh, the, all four videos are out. Uh, since they're post-production, they're $500 each for a year's viewing. But since you are watching this tonight, if you order tonight, I will give it to you for $250 each for a year's viewing, which is half off. So I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, I would encourage you, um, when you do look at them, watch them all the way through. And we've made them very user-friendly. We have timestamps on them. So you click a button at the bottom of the film and a timestamp pops out and you click on it and it'll take you right to an area where you're having trouble with a procedure or you can't recall it easily or something. You can play it over and over again. And so we've made it very user friendly that way. Uh, you can either call me to order it, 469-995-9907. You can go online to ttapcenter.com under Seminars Prevention professional, go to the seminar you want, under requested location, type in film and your phone number, click the down arrow by 395 and choose the 250 option. And we'll give it to you for the 250. And I'll just type in my phone number here so you have it again, 469-995-9907. And email drbbrk at hotmail.com I encourage you, if you're having trouble with patient, uh, you know, just call me and, you know, I ask me, say I'm having difficulty, what would you do? And we'll see if we can figure out what to do together. I certainly don't know everything, but maybe we can put our heads together and figure it out. What are they about? T-TAPs Film one, it's the use of myotatic reflexes to resolve pain and biomechanics of chronic neuromuscular skeletal conditions. And uh, you can normally get somebody off a cane or a walker in one or two visits or standing up out of a wheelchair in just a few visits. I've done all of these in seminars with everybody watching. Immediately restore significant range of motion. Understand how reciprocal innervation can immediately help restore function in different parts of the body. Correct foot drop in the majority of cases. Cogwheel rigidity of arm and leg in most stroke and cerebral palsy victims. We did a 
I've done several stroke victims. We had a doctor bring a cerebral palsy victim uh, to a seminar in California and op open uh, that person's arm and hand up, you know, in seconds in front of the whole class. The doctor asked, he, he said, I haven't seen the patient yet. Would you still treat her? And I said, sure. And uh, the caretaker was there pushing her in the wheelchair. She couldn't believe you know, what happened right in front of her. She'd never seen such a thing before. Improved hearing and tinnitus in most cases. Basically, in all the seminars uh, that I give and these films, uh, I ask you, basically, if you think you've seen it all, think again. Uh, forget everything you thought you knew. There's probably a better, quicker way to do it. You have to keep your mind open to things like that. In most cases, quickly and significantly reduce or eliminates the following symptoms, usually on the same visit. Fibromyalgia, sciatica, necessity of using cane or walker to walk from leg weakness, herniated or bulging disc, unoperated rotator cuff and frozen soldier, sh shoulder syndrome, regional pain syndrome, burning tongue and mouth, burning pain in the lower extremities, genitals, upper body, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, uh, numb hands and feet, cranial nerve symptoms, hearing loss of differing frequencies, tinnitus, foot drop, carpal tunnel or thoracic syndrome, all the outlet syndromes, cold or burning hands or feet, Renaud's, loss of vibration sense in feet or toes, Renaud syndrome, uh, an MD flew from uh, New Mexico to Kansas City and uh, specifically to take care of the Renaud syndrome and in 10 minutes she was totally normal in the middle of the winter when it was really really bad symptoms. Loss of vibration sense in the feet and toes, dizziness, vertigo, positive pinwheel test, bladder leakage. Uh, you can usually get bladder leakage down to zero very very quickly using the stuff out of part one. Vaginal prolapse, numb hands and feet, drop arches, hyperhidrosis, polyhidrosis, uh, cogwheel rigidity from stroke, ALS, game bar A, MS symptoms, Parkinson's symptoms, seizures. Uh, we show you how to stop seizures in 15 seconds and keep them from recurring. And uh, we use stuff out of the medical literature as well as what I teach for that particular one. Maze, you're going to be guaranteed this is not reflexology, AK, CRT, PNT, TBM, transverse friction massage, spinal reflex therapy, or contract reflex analysis. All this is based on known tenets of acupuncture, trigger point therapy, reflexes, and neurology. It's found in Laws and Tenets in Dorland's Illustrated Medical Dictionary, Chusage Neurophysiology, Guidance, Textbook of Medical Physiology and others taught in all CC accredited chiropractic colleges. Treatment effects are verifiable by a standard orthopedic neurologic exam. I am published in JMPT and Chiropractic Economics on techniques being taught. I'm a formal, former adjunct faculty member, postgraduate division, Texas Chiropractic College. Now, this Part one is basically reflexes alone with small amounts of scar tissue in the skin. Part two, first part of it is an extension of part one, which we don't have time to teach, so we teach the first four hours in part two. And the first thing we teach is uh, how to test over 200 muscles Le easily in less than 10 minutes, immediately strength all the, all the weak ones, strengthen them just by touching one just like this. By the way, it's an asymptomatic one. And the only exception is extreme atrophy takes longer. The second thing we teach is how to palpate the whole body in less than five minutes, and immediately decrease or eliminate all inflamed areas, uh, er all pain, uh, lightly touching one single spot, an asymptomatic spot, just like this. Inflamed areas usually take a bit longer, uh, but they'll usually drop in half immediately and just take a little longer to go down. Now what these do is uh, they keep you from having to go from muscle to muscle to strengthen it, like an applied kinesiology, and uh, muscle to muscle to get rid of the trigger points.
as in Nemo and other techniques. So we're really shortcutting everything with a lot less effort on your part, a lot less discomfort to that patient. Some things that it helps, chronic athletic injuries, hamstrings, ankles, wrists, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, knee, turf toe, shin splints, chondromalacia patella, weak ankles, trick knees, etc., plantar fasciitis, myalgia parasitica, bronchitis, asthma, gagging, esophageal spasm, reflux esophagitis, TMJ syndrome, migraine headaches, chronic whiplash, chronic hip, knee, ankle, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain, tendonitis, bursitis, TC capsulitis, frozen shoulder, Dupuytren's contracture, trigger finger, Oscar Schlatter's degree, uh, disease, chronic fever and sore throat, scar tissue and acupuncture, old fractures, chronic pain, bone sclerotome pain, fibromyalgia, burning pain, resistant sciatica, spondylolisthesis, uh, small joint fibrous ankylosis, chronic shingles, arthritic finger and toe joints, and adhere organs from each other and stimulate uh, circulation lymphatic flow, diaphragmatic and accessory breathing muscle function, endonasal, including balloon nasoplasty, show you about four different ways to do that, eustachian tube techniques for chronic sinusitis, chronic migraines to true eustachian tube deafness, uh, Meniere syndrome, female cyclical men men menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness and vertigo, necessity of using a cane or walker to walk, get people off of canes and walkers just very, very quickly, herniator bulging disc, rotator cuff, frozen shoulder syndrome, foot drop, hearing loss of different frequencies, tinnitus, tunnel syndromes, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness and vertigo, dropped arches, unexplained chest pain, MS, Parkinson's, ALS, game, barre, ankylosing spondylitis symptoms, seizures, and a lot more. Now, the second thing that we teach is how do you take your rehab time down to about a fourth of what it normally takes. And like ART, Graston Transverse Friction Massage, for example, ART in their seminars teach uh, it takes four to six visits to clear a muscle out. Graston, six to 10, transverse friction massage, right in Syriac Spaniel, 10 to 20 visits. We average one visit, seldom more than that. Takes seconds rather than minutes. You don't leave the office wasted at night. A lot less pain to the patient, a lot less effort on your part to get the job done. And that's what part two is about. Now it takes care of dense scar tissue outside the joint, so part three is dense scar tissue inside the joint. Now the first thing that we teach is how to uh, take a patient and look at, uh, you palpate all the way up and down the paraspinals, you find a lot of tension and pain. We show you how to find one segment, do that on it, wait about 10 seconds, go back, the pain and tension in the paraspinals is gone. Basically, this is to get rid of the uh, compensatory subluxations, so now you only have the primary subluxations left to treat. Now, I've treated over 40,000 patients in all 50 states, 97 countries, over 3,000 high-level athletes, over 800 of which were professional athletes, 12 professional athletic teams, three of them from four are foreign national teams. I was the first chiropractor invited to treat the NFL run for daylight and fast man competition. Get most athletes back on the field in days in most cases cases, even if off for months. Of course, this re applies to non-athletes also. Rib and costal cartilage, golfers and tennis elbow, chondromalacia patella, bunions, dementias. Yeah, dementias. We show you how to treat the knee and help dementia. And uh, we just gave one of these part three classes and one of the doctors there flew in from Cleveland. He actually went to Troy, Michigan. He saw me get a woman out of dementia. Uh, you know, and 
just several visits during the seminar, and he told the whole class about it. High arches, flat feet, drop transverse cuboid arches, reliably relieve reflux esophagitis, esophageal spasm, upper GI conditions, hiatal hernia. Yeah, uh, osseous adjustment actually relieves that. And the adjusting the stomach down actually is the best way to treat those. And we show you how to do that. Chromion sterno sternoclavicular uh, joints, costochondritis, cost uh, chondritis and costochondritis, hallux rigidus, hammer and claw toes, bow legs, knock knees, frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis, rotator cuff, all the tunnel syndromes. And the cranial techniques, and we show you how to adjust the cranials very lightly and succinctly, the extremities, the vertebra, the pelvis, all of those. I've gotten autistic children speaking sentences after only single words, significant demeanor changes even when entering normal schools. Other docs I taught report youth autistic patients can now multitask while they couldn't prior to treatment. Had a couple of docs call me unbelieving when I showed them this and told them in class, they called back and uh, they had kids talking, you know, were five and seven years old who'd never said a word before. And they started talking right after the adjustments. And they and their parents just couldn't believe it. Stop elusive migraines, improve vision, hearing, tinnitus, improve elusive organ and gland dysfunctions, correct TMJ functions. Now, the first three parts correct the nervous system. The nervous system controls the secretory and excretory events of the body. And so a lot of uh, cases that you have where you've been doing nutritional intervention and the patient hasn't responded, this really helps. It, they clear up automatically because it's actually a nervous system issue that you didn't recognize as such and didn't know how to treat. So this is very, very good for those cases. Uh, you know, where they're just resisting nutritional intervention. Now, film four is direct nutritional intervention. Uh, biochemical individuality strategies. Now, I hold an MS in biology emphasizing human nutrition. I'm a master herbologist. I've been a member of six nutritional, medical, and scientific boards, performed over 15,000 actually over 23,000, I misestimated that, nutritional assessments, strategies to significantly accelerate correction of people, you know, they've had the testing and they can only eat like three or four or five or six foods. Um, they're allergic to virtually every feel, food, feel they can't eat anything. Autoimmune disorders that really aren't. Uh, we show you the strip, the, the true structure of autoimmune. It's not what you think it is. I've had uh, uh, people, I had this one person who was getting weekly allergy shots for 28 and a half years. We got them off the shots doing the stuff that we describe here. Okay. Dysmenorrhea, excess and prolonged flow, bone mineralization, osteopenia, osteoporosis and fracture, infection, natural antibiotics, nutritional interference, of antibiotics, endogenous poisons, metabolic intermediates, hormone imbalances, seizures, fungal and candida conditions. We normally get somebody candida free just through dietary manipulation two to three weeks, no matter how long they've had it. Chronic fatigue, ulcers, bleeding ulcers, constant bloody noses, uh, psycho metabolosomatic and viscerosomatic syndromes, Nutrient interdependency is how one nutrient can correct five others. Uh, you, you can't pick this up on a test. You have to go through a certain procedure to figure it out. Deficiency correction, long-term versus catch-up, short-term. Lack of ingestion or bioavailability is a question. We, should, we talk about that a lot. Thyroid non-thyroid, non-caloric, how to correct them for obesity, why it occurs. 90% uh, of adults over 40 after losing weight, carb protein loss, you have a weight loss roulette. 
we talk about the Atkins fallacy and uh, huge, huge testing that was done on Atkins. Uh, 130,000 people over 20 to 26 years uh, shows it's a complete fallacy long term. I don't fault it short term. Long term I have a big problem with because it increases uh, all form mortality. We show you right out of a major study that was done. Abnormal cell growth, malnutrition, preventing chemotherapy, tumor attenuation, uh, accelerate good cell growth and decelerate bad cell growth. So we show you how cancer behaves. Nutritional causes and corrections of behavioral disorders, hyper and hypotension, bone demineralization, depression, hyper and hypothyroidism, hyper and hypoglycemia, failure to digest, absorb, metabolize, secrete, and excrete, acid base imbalances, now, <clears throat> we take a bit of a different approach, and the approach is this. Um, we take each vitamin, and we show you what foods that they're pre predominantly in. Now, they're in predominantly a, a large amount of things, and we ask everybody after we go through them, uh, is anybody really deficient in intake unless they're on totally junk food diet? And everybody in the class says, no, not at all. And therefore, it has to be some problem in metabolism of the vitamin. It has to be in digestion, absorption, transport through the blood, transport through the cell wall, transport through the mitochondrial or nuclear membrane, then it has to be broken down to its very basic constituent parts and then secreted or excreted. If there's a problem in any of those, then it's going to cause a problem. Then we show you about negative feedback loops. For example, uh, I, I always throw out the question, if you have uh, a problem with electrolytes, what are we taught? We're taught to give them electrolytes. But the problem with that is that uh, uh, that's only palliating the loss, but what's really causing it? Well, what controls electrolytes? It's androgens. What controls androgens? Progesterone. Progesterone also controls cortisone, which controls swelling and inflammation, by the way. What controls progesterone? Pregnenolone, which also controls DHEA. And both DHEA and progesterone control testosterone, testosterone controls estrogen, and there's a negative feedback loop to pregnenolone again. So, if you're having a trouble with pregnenolone, which can cause multiple effects, then you may have to look to estrogen feedback loop. What controls it also? Well, vitamin D3, which is controlled by cholesterol and sunlight. So basically what we're looking at is rather than look at the symptom itself, you may have to intervene two or three steps before or two or three steps after where the symptom occurs in order to treat that person properly. And those are the types of things that we get into. So I would suggest it would be really good if you would get all four of these films. Be getting them for two fifty tonight if you order it. I also do mentoring, and I have the largest practice in the world. Um, several years uh, when nine one one hit. Most practices went down 30 to 50 percent, some as much as 70 percent. Mine went up 1,700 percent, and that's not by accident. And I'm well qualified uh, to help anybody with their practice get to where you want to go. Now, difference between me and practice consulting, consulting management, practice coaching, is. I don't try to make you into my practice. I ask you specifically what you want to accomplish. I say, okay, let's start working on how to get there. Okay. We've had doctors just starting out. We've had multi-million dollar 
practices. And uh, one doc's been with me a year and a half now. Multi-million dollar practice. Um, profitability has gone up 160% just in a year and a half period of time. And uh, we can help you do just amazing things. One of the things I like to talk about is even without getting you any more new, new patients than you already are getting. Uh, the average 10 people that call in to inquire about your practice, only seven or eight will set an appointment. Then out of those that set an appointment, only seven or eight actually show up. So out of 10 that call, you're already down to five. Now out of that, only two or three actually will follow through. So what we try to get you to do right off the bat without even talking about increasing new patients, which we can help you do astronomically, is we want you to get nine out of 10 who call in, nine or 10 out of 10 set an appointment, and then nine or 10 out of 10 of those show up and nine or 10 out of those actually follow through. So right there, without even getting any more new patient calls, you've tripled to quadrupled your practice. And we show you how to do that right off. Nobody else teaches in this way. By the way, I've been through 32 different practice management, consulting, and coaching uh, techniques. And, and uh, you know, I took a little bit off all those, but, you know, most of what I teach, uh, nobody else is teaching it like I do. Uh, they didn't have anywhere close. I, I think the closest anybody had to my practice that I was learning from my practice was five times bigger than theirs. So we can help you all, okay? Dr. Bonebrook's preeminence mentoring is what I've been searching for my entire career. Combines top-notch unique clinical knowledge and procedures, down-to-earth business strategies. Grant Larson, he's up in Minnesota. Dr. B's mentoring program is second to none. Wealth of knowledge, expertise, shares made me a much more thorough and streamlined doctor. He's in California. Mentorship program is the best investment I ever made. I thought I was a good doctor before Dr. Bonebreak. I laugh and I think back to the first time. And this doctor is in Ohio, in Cleveland. Since mentorship with Dr. Bonebreak, I've seen several improvements in my practice. See patients getting their desired results by using his treatment methods. Uh, Dr. Sansky, who's in Chicago, so increased his practice, decided to move down to the area where he's always wanted to practice, so he moved down to Florida. He's starting out with a good bang there. I wasn't sure if I needed a mentor as I already thought my business was very successful. I attended Dr. Bonebrook's scar tissue seminar where I witnessed immediate changes on myself, my brother, and other doctors. Houston, Texas. Can't believe how much my practice has changed and grown since I began mentoring with Dr. Bonebrook. This is Fort Worth. I've been in private practice 23 years. I own and operate a successful chiropractic sports medicine clinic in Austin, Austin, Texas. He says, no fluff, no cookie coder, no one size fits all. That's right. We want to make it what you want it to be. Gilbert Danforth, Dr. Chiropractic, gives you your big picture. He's in Lubbock, Texas. I've been a sole practitioner 25 years, been my fair share, and then some of the seminars. Experienced a plethora of consultants, techniques, and teachers. Thought I'd seen about it all. Houston, Texas. Folks, if you want to be helped, I can help you, but you have to take that first step. And you just have to jump into it. And I, I tell people all the time, you know, they say, well, what's the difference between you and us? And, well... Big thing is, is when I decide I want to do something, I jump and I do it right then. I don't wait forever to do it. And that's, you know, I'm probably less of a, a mentality than most all of you. I'm very slow learner, and that's probably why I have to jump quick, because I know it's going to take me longer to do something. Preeminence mentoring. Everyone is a good fit. How preeminence mentoring works enables you to become top level, rapid, efficient patient response with scientific methodology, 
fan of medical literature, become a nerve and biochemistry expert, we want you to become expert. Get referrals from everywhere. Get paid what you're worth, low stress and better family time. Others committed to change your lives, now it's your turn. Now just close your eyes and imagine the business of your dreams. Smooth running, plenty of highly satisfied and enthusiastic patients, as many as you want or can handle. Financial security, time to enjoy with your family, time to exercise regularly, great health. Three reasons it works for you. You will devote the time, effort, and dedication to give what you want. Charisma is unnecessary. You notice I talk in a monotone. My wife wonders how anybody can stay asleep during any seminars, let, let alone patients. I am not, um, you know, somebody with a lot of charisma. Um, group or one-on-one -on -one mentoring is very affordable. Your next step is to commit to be superlative. You go to the link ttapcenter.com, choose the mentoring level that fits you, commit to change your life. Mentoring includes, we have 12 month group mentoring. One group call per week for 12 months. It's 500 a month or one payment of 5,000. Saves you $1,000. You receive 52 one hour weekly real time group interactive podcasts. What's covered? Type in the questions you wish to be answered by me. Ask questions, listen to others. Answers uh, for yours and those others pose. Step up your practice to the level you want and desire. Up your income dramatically in accordance with your level of commitment. How to get paid for what you do. Get answers regarding how to run your practice and in the most uh, efficient manner possible. Think and reason quickly in any practice situation. Give talks that get lots of new patients. My average uh, uh, talks got 35 to 50 uh, new patients every time I gave a talk. And I used to give them every week for a long time. Uh, hey, somebody has somebody has your mic on. Please turn your... Okay, somebody had their mic on there. Sorry. Don't ask for patients to get referrals and get a lot of them. And we want to show you how to quit asking for referrals and yet get a whole lot. Communicate in such a way as to draw referrals to you from all over. How to testify in court and depositions. How to write narrative reports in the best manner possible. Situations answered answer that solve your own situations. How to best treat and give conditions for the quickest results. Uh, how to hire people, how to fire people, how to hire associates, how to write contracts, how to write the best uh, final narrative reports, how to testify in court. You can choose to step up to the one-year one one-on-one mentorship in the first three months and get all those benefits. Six-month one-on-one mentoring. One call a week for six months. It's a thousand a month or one payment of $4,000, which saves $2,000, quite a savings. You receive six months of one-hour mentoring per week. That's 26 of them with me, including any aspect of your process, uh, any aspect of your practice. How to treat any patient issue. How to communicate. This is at least important as patient treatment. But I tell you how to be brief, not be wordy about things. I think... Uh, People put their foot in their mouth when they talk too much. So I'm all for being brief and to the point. Access notes from all four TTAP seminars. I'll cover what's at the top of your radar first or I suggest anything. And you know where your weaknesses are, so let's address them. If you decide to step up to the one-year, one-on-one mentorship in the first three months, you'll get all of its benefits. So the 12-month one-on-one -on -one mentorship, one call a week for 52 weeks, 1000 a month or one payment of 8000 saves you $4,000, quite a savings. That's what most people pick. Prepaid also includes all four films and a link on your website. Now, link on your website. Uh, I'm working on that right now. I have thousands of doctor and patient testimonials. And we're going to put them up in alphabetical type of order 
T taps one, two, three, four. And basically, existing patients and prospective patients will be able to go on your link, go through to my link, and look at these and see the different things. Now, it's one thing for you to say, hey, I went to this great seminar and I learned all these things. And they go, oh, yeah, right. Just like you look at um, the flyers that I put out, the first thing you think is, yeah, right, how can anybody do that? And then you go to the seminar and you find out that you can and pretty easily in most cases. Well, patients think that way too. And when they see that other doctors and patients have experienced improvement, they sign up. And when I put these up on my own website years ago, it was good for 20 patients a month per part. That's 80 every month. Then I sent to my patients, I said, go on and look at it and see what's up there. And they said, I didn't know you could take care of that. I need to come in again. So we had an average of 20 re-ups every month. Now I've seen over 40,000 patients, folks. I averaged six. 140 new patient calls every month for years. Yes, that's 640 per month, not per year. Even per year would be pretty good. Folks, $50 each, even if you don't sign up to for the mentorship, when I have this up, it's $50 a month per part. You put that up and you'll see a whole lot of patients come in and patients re-upping. Doctors blogs, $50 a month for each course. So you'll be able to go on and blog, talk with other doctors who've taken these TTAPs parts. They're going to say, hey, I got these great results by doing this on a patient. And then you're going to say, and then they say, you know, I'm having trouble with this one. What do you guys think I ought to do? And then you interact. And a good thing about this is you're looking at stuff other than what I'm teaching in TTAPs also because uh, people are going to contribute other things. If you get stuck on something, you ask me to jump in, I'll say, well, this is what I would do, and we'll all put our heads together for the benefit of your patient here. So one year, one-on-one -on -one mentoring per patient uh, is 52, 52 hours, 52 weeks. Anything included in any of the rest of them, any aspect of your patient, how to treat any patient issue, that's what most doctors talk about. Uh, I want you to get to where you hear what the main concern is the patient is. You ask two or three questions. You go right to it. You know what's number one, two, three, four, or five things that you're going to do in order to help that patient out to get very quick results. How to communicate. How to immediately know how to answer questions, not only with the patients, but with your employees, with associates with other doctors that you encounter. You have access to notes from all four TTAP seminars. All four videos will be yours for one year of viewing, so that won't cost you anything. Up to 12 seminars online or in person. So the in-person seminars, and we're preparing to put all those online also, so you can get CE credits. So you can have 12 of those in combination, any combination you want. I'll cover what's at the top of your radar first before I suggest anything. You know where your weaknesses are. You'll get a certificate of completion for each TTAPS part that uh, you become expert in. You'll get the blogs. If you decide to extend another year, it'll be just half price. So after that four, first year, uh, it's just uh, $6,000 if you do it monthly or 4000 for a re-up. Most of the doctors go for that because we help them so very much in their first year. Basically, commit now. Don't wait. If you're waiting, you're just putting it off. You're just delaying it. So why don't you achieve your dream practice now? That's the whole thing. Like I said, main thing about me, I decided to do something. I just did it. I didn't wait around and hope for stuff to happen. That's what you have to do too. Disclaimer, business results depend on effort and following directions. I can show you what to do, but I can't do it for you. You got to lose your excuses, take consistent action to improve. If you'll do this, sign up. If not, just don't. We give information and encouragement. You're the one that has to take action to improve your life and your family's life. 
Okay. Oh, we got in kind of early tonight. That's good. Now, does anybody have any questions over anything tonight? Now's the time to ask, so put it in the uh, chat box over there. Do you have any questions whatsoever? You can ask it about the films. You can ask it about the topic tonight on a realer tissue. You can ask about mentoring, any of those things. Any questions whatsoever? Okay, now if you'd like to get a hold of me, there's the number 469-995-9907 or drbbrk at hotmail.com. Um, I'd suggest if you're having any troubles at all, just take action right now. That's the only way you're going to do it. Okay, for the four seminar films, do we get DVDs? They're all online. It's Dr. Boatwright. Those are all online. They're for a year's viewing. Okay. All for a year's viewing online. So you can pick up, uh, you don't need a DVD to look at, you just pick up your phone and go on it. Uh, go on your uh, uh, desktop computer. I, I was watching one of the films to go over it again on my phone today. It works just fine on the, on the phone. Any other questions? Any other questions whatsoever? Okay, I want to thank everybody tonight, and we're going to have a good one coming up in three three or so weeks from now. And uh, Are they on your website? Yes, they are. You can order them on your website, just like I said. Uh, just go in under Seminars Professional. Just click on the part that you want, one, two, three, or four, and it's going to ask you... Uh, uh, which location you click on that and you write in film and you put your phone number then you click the down arrow by 365 and you choose the 250 and you make your order okay so that's how you do it online or you can call me in person either one any other questions okay thank you so much y'all have a great memorial weekend Bye-bye.